beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son those following online god bless you psalm 92 i read verse 1 to 3 it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord and to sing praises unto thy name o most high verse 2 to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. Lord, give us understanding in the name of Jesus. We have taught here again and again that spiritual growth, please listen. One of the indices as we have taught to measure spiritual growth God has taught us here again that there are only two scriptural indices to measure whether or not a man or a people are growing spiritually. Number one is your degree of conformity experientially to the image of the Christ. Your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two is your comprehension of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom these two things must happen in your life for you to be said to be growing spiritually if for any reason at any point in your christian experience you are not conforming to the fullness of the image of the christ you are not growing and even if you are conforming to the fullness of the image of the christ but you do not have access to illumination, the working knowledge of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. Your Christian experience will be barren and frustrated and it will still sabotage the fullness of all that Christ died for. So on one hand, we must contend through intimacy, encounters with his word, to rise to a point where our lives become an undoubtable reflection of the reality of who Christ is. And then on the other hand, we must have access to illumination, light, and understanding. It says the entrance of thy word giveth light, then it gives understanding unto the simple. And one of the mysteries that we have come to understand that control so many things, so many results in the kingdom, is a mystery that the Bible identifies as thanksgiving. Now, let me tell you something. In your spiritual journey, you should be able to tabulate the principles of the kingdom that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit you have had access to versus the results they were designed to produce. That way your Christian experience becomes predictable. So when you talk about wealth and prosperity, you should be able to 
define the principle that governs it health and longevity the principle that governs it deliverance and breakthrough the principle that governs it are we together now influence and increase the principle that governs it if you cannot match the outcomes you desire versus the kingdom principles that are responsible for delivering them your christian life will be barren because you will largely be guessing you see our ignorance in the body of christ is not ignorance of what we want we already know what we want but the mysteries to be engaged that deliver the results we desire we do we either do not know them or we do not understand their operation are we together now knowing them like i've always taught here is like having the ingredients for food if you have the ingredients for fried rice you have done well but that's not equal to fried rice you must understand the combination one mistake can make fried rice become something else one mistake are we together yeah. that's how it is so you must work with god to find out what ingredients are required for the outcome remember i gave an analogy one time i, I can't remember when um if i want to buy if i want to make yam and egg sauce I may be wrong but i think that rice is not needed in that combination is that true so if i am on my way to the market and you sell rice for me rice is good but it's not needed as far as what i want to produce is concerned now there are many useful informations in the kingdom but you have to find out which ones are responsible for the formation of what you desire so that that certain lights are available does not mean they are necessarily needed for this aspect of your spiritual journey when a believer gets born again there are certain realities that are true and consistent with god's character but they are not part of the ingredients required to lay the foundation for his spiritual work are we together now so if someone just gets born again i'm not going to be teaching him on the principles for of, for wealth and prosperity it's unnecessary it's a wrong foundation it's like using zinc for foundation zinc is important for a building but there is a season when zinc is needed when the house is already built then you will need zinc are we getting it now so it is important that as we approach the word of god we stay with the holy spirit to define for us the ingredients required for every season of our growth he is the only one who has in his hands the blueprint of the mysteries required per time per growth you cannot guess what you think you need it's the same arrogance that a patient would demonstrate seeing a doctor when you come before a doctor you don't come and say doctor i think i need panadol no 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 you may not even have headache so you listen are we together there are times you feel healthy but the doctor will tell you you need a drip it's up to you to trust the wisdom and the sacrifice of the doctor brothers and sisters this is one of the excellencies of working with the spirit he minimizes wastage in your life so you don't invest your life doing many spiritual things that are not profitable they may be spiritual but are they profitable as defined by the season you are in it says the men of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what they ought to do let the Holy Spirit be the one to unveil the curriculum of your spiritual development it is costly to guess it is costly to copy you must work with him to define the blueprint part time so there are seasons in your life where he will switch his emphasis to your finances you may feel you are getting carnal he will never talk to you about spiritual growth again because according to his desire for you the formation of the spiritual house he's raising necessitates that you now know the principles of wealth so even if you are fasting he will still lead you back to the principles of finances and then there are times even if i'm teaching on finances in koinonia his personalized dealings with you 
is helping you conform towards the character of the Christ so after you benefit from my teaching when you go back with him he would fold that script and keep it to be reviewed when that season is open in your life and you will continue your dealing on character with him this is how men grow spiritually but most Christians don't respect the leadership of the spirit we think because a truth is spiritual it is applicable now no not every truth is needed at every time the holy spirit must prioritize truth like a spiritual house then you will find out if you follow him i guarantee you you will never miss out on any area there may be seasons where you think you have not known certain things yet just walk with him because by the time you get the basics, you will now say this was a simple issue. That's why I did not emphasize it in your growth. If not, we will major on the minors and minor on the majors. Academically speaking, there are different courses and we add credit units to them according to their relevance with respect to the degree you want to obtain. There are courses that are one credit unit. You can study them in three days. There are courses that are six credit units, three credit units. That's how it is in the spirit. Not every truth has equal value. They are all truth, but they do not have equal value. As far as the, the, the requirement for your destiny is concerned. Please, I'd like you before we continue to pray in one minute and say, Holy Spirit, I embrace your leadership. It, it's, it's not just important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There are so many believers filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say, the Lord is my colleague. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me. A sheep does not have a system of defense. It's only defense. It's his alignment to the voice of the shepherd. A sheep does not have horns. It cannot fight. His protection is absolutely dependent on the wisdom of the shepherd. So he says like a sheep, the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of these mysteries, and I've shared it many times, I would share it again, is the mystery called Thanksgiving. There is... A revelation about thanksgiving that many believers do not understand in the body of Christ and so we have lost cheap battles we have given ourselves prey to situations and circumstances that truthfully speaking without any effort on our own would have established cheap victories may someone get this revelation today in the name of Jesus Christ thanksgiving is one of the mysteries that we see being practiced in the bible again and again that every time a people came to express their gratitude as individuals and as a corporate entity there was such a dramatic response that went beyond the object of their thanksgiving they thank god for certain things and god moved far beyond what they were thanking him for we see this even in the life of jesus the apostle of our faith many times in scripture we saw him engage this mystery and it produced dramatic results so i want to share with us very quickly why should i give thanks why should i incorporate this mystery as part of the principles for establishing the victory of christ jesus in my life why thanksgiving number one very quickly please the bible tells us that it is a good thing to give thanks psalms 92 from verse 1 to 3 tells us it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord and the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above so if thanksgiving is a good thing then it means thanksgiving is consistent with the character of god and worth practicing and worth living by the first reason why you must give thanks is that it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord it is godly to be thankful write it down it is godly to be thankful it is spiritual to be thankful it's a good thing it is godly it is spiritual 
to be thankful number two first thessalonians 5 verse 18 the bible tells us there that it is the will of god for us to give thanks first thessalonians 5 verse 18 it says in everything give thanks for this is the will of god now listen the situation is not the will of god your response is what is the will of god it says in everything regardless of the outcome it should not affect your response give thanks for this the thanksgiving is the will of god so regardless of what is around me regardless of the outcome it should never affect my understanding and my approach of being ever thankful this is the will of god in christ concerning you that in all things you give thanks the second reason why we must engage the mystery of thanksgiving is that it is the will of god and we know that the only way the kingdom comes is when his will is being done matthew 6 verse 10 right thy kingdom come only when and if your will is being done so there is a dimension of the kingdom that needs to find expression in my life and that dimension is at the mercy of me fulfilling the will of god as far as thanksgiving is concerned meaning if i do not give thanks i rob god of the opportunity of demonstrating a dimension of the reality of his kingdom it is the will of god to give thanks number three thanksgiving according to john chapter 6 from verse 6 to 13 help us media is the secret to multiplication thanksgiving is the seed for more whenever you want more of anything in your life the key is not complaining the key is not grumbling the key is that you engage the mystery of thanksgiving multiplication and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what to do i love jesus he inspires me i love it every time the bible says he knew what to do it's terrible to not know what to do jesus knew what to do philip answered him 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little we're reading to 13 8 one of the disciples andrew simon peter's brother said unto him there is a lad here that had five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they what are they lord i have this little talent what is it called with respect to what i need for my life lord i want to build a house and all i have is ten thousand naira in my account what is ten thousand with respect to seven million or ten million that i need and jesus engages a mystery verse 10 and jesus said make the men sit down now there was so much grass in the place so the men sat down in number about five thousand eleven and Jesus took the loaves and when he had what he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fish as much as they would 12 when they were filled he said to his disciples gather up the fragments that remain that nothing may be lost 13 therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remain over and above unto them that had eaten thanksgiving that's all jesus did he took the bread he took the loaves lifted it to heaven and said father thank you because wherever there is thanksgiving the grace that multiplies will always answer whenever there is genuine thanks those who know this have changed their lives overnight you see when you study the old testament many times people were punished for murmuring one of the things that brought the anger of god upon the nation of israel was murmuring and complaining is it only moses you will speak to this and that and that and that and they went through catastrophic events the bible says jesus lifted the baskets and he gave thanks 
the african culture has trained our minds to not be thankful are we together someone gives you one one thousand naira every day and then you now say sir are you not knowing that i'm growing now you started giving me one one thousand before i married are you aware that my wife is pregnant with twins we always want more by placing demands through complaint by placing demands through ingratitude but in the kingdom the system of the kingdom is such that every time what you have is not enough the way you let god know is to say thank you thank you is the code in the spirit that says lord i need more you don't say give me more you say lord i thank you for the one you gave me and then he knows that you have authorized yourself to move to the next level of supply can someone say thank you jesus say it with all your heart thank you jesus don't say lord except you are not lord i must finish this year well i must and i must finish no it, it must be my turn to chop no lord thank you for me to be witnessing the 16th day of december i give you thanks and god will say that's right that is the code for finishing the year that's the code for qualifying for 2017 thanksgiving demons don't give thanks they never give thanks not one is not once in scripture there are some things demons cannot do they cannot give thanks it's not in the character of satan to give thanks it's anti-satan to be thankful you frustrate satan when you give thanks not only is it a sign of contentment is a mystery that acknowledges that there is a god above you and that that god is worthy of thanks and that he has more than you have experienced and that it is within his power to extend his benevolence to your life say it again thank you jesus the key to multiplication jeremiah 30 verse 9 jeremiah chapter 30 verse 9 Jeremiah chapter 30 am I 19 I'm sorry not 9 Jeremiah 30 verse 19 I like us to read together it's projected if your eyes can get to the projector screen let's read together one to read and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and as a result what will happen I will who will do the multiplication I will multiply them and they shall not be few I will also glorify them and they shall not be small just because there is a voice of thanksgiving to say Lord I have just one child now but I give you thanks not to say Lord will I die like that with only girls in my house some of those culture driven antichrist mentality lord i give you thanks there are many women who are barren but you have been faithful i celebrate you for what you have done and the bible says i will multiply them the code in the spirit is thanksgiving don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you when you get to a door you don't cry when you get to a door you don't weep when you get to a door you use a key a giant door can be at the mercy of a little key you can put in your pocket but if that key is not there that door will not open forever the key for more could it be that there are people seated here brothers and sisters who god is ready to give surprises in the next 15 days but the the next dimension of god's grace is at the mercy it says out of them shall proceed thanksgiving not complaining you see why many nations never rise our economic theories are designed to complain we shout and say everything blame who is not doing what blame this a mother is blaming father father blaming mother children blaming everybody and while they are doing that god is looking with all the love in his heart is limited by our lack of understanding the principles of the kingdom lord at my age i'm earning forty thousand. Um, is that a testimony your name is being mocked and god says my god someone else that forty thousand is his prayer point is what he put as a benchmark
the secret to multiplication is thanksgiving hallelujah number number what number four the fourth reason why we give thanks according to luke 17 please 13 to 19 is that it is also the secret to wholeness and perfection thanksgiving is the secret to wholeness and perfection write this down it is the last step in exercising your faith in your faith equation the last step is thanksgiving haven't engaged the word haven't spoken haven't obeyed the last step a man of God said this and I quote he said when you are trying to call God the last digit of his phone number is thanksgiving like you press 080 are we together when you get to the last digit the very last digit is thanksgiving and they lifted up their voices and said master have mercy on us the 10 lepers 14 and when he saw them he said unto them go show yourself unto the priest and it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed look at me they were cleansed but not whole to be cleansed means the leprosy left but their hands were still showing you could see leprosy on them are we together now if you saw them you tested them in the hospital it would show that there was no more leprosy but their fingers were still stunted their physical expression still showed that they once suffered leprosy and the bible says and one of them see how scarce the spirit of thanksgiving is only one out of every ten and one of them when he saw that he was healed turned back and with a with a whisper quietly and say i don't want people to know the lesson uh -uh. the bible says with a loud voice glorified god next verse and fell down on his face at his feet doing what giving him thanks and he was an unqualified person a samaritan a samaritan not a jew next verse and jesus answering said were they not ten cleansed but where are the nine next verse there are not found that return to give thanks save this stranger 19 and he said unto him hallelujah arise go thy way you have fulfilled the last step of the faith equation and now your faith has made you whole your faith has made you whole are we together so you had the fibroid they operated the fibroid and had to remove the womb but you are alive yes you are alive but there's no more child again medically speaking is that true the bible says the woman returned and said lord although they caught my womb and i'm alive thank you take it to the next dimension i give you praise and then as she's giving praise and rejoicing all of a sudden the god who made womb before makes another one and i'm standing here only because you made you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only you may listen there are many things in our lives that are not yet perfected and the key 
is although we have seen the miracle you came and you testified yes but many of us have stopped God from finishing you know how you build a house and God has a paint has a wallpaper has a finishing and you say Lord I am so grateful I mean I'm so happy that I'm inside and God says do you know if I show you the picture of this house I'm, I'm still yet to paint and finish how many of you know those who do architecture and construction that the things you use to finish the house can be more expensive than the whole building so there is more compared to what you've seen there is a bigger side to the miracle you only saw a small piece of the pie but we complain and grumble and compare ourselves were there not nine that returned he says go thy way your faith has perfected you your faith has perfected you philippians chapter 4 please from verse 6 to 7 still on the fourth reason philippians chapter 4 6 and 7 let's hurry up please six and seven it says be careful the word be careful there doesn't mean be careless is the word anxiety be anxious for nothing he says but in everything listen listen to how believers pray by prayer and supplication perfected with thanksgiving let your requests there is a spiritual formula for getting your request known it says when you bring the supplication and the prayer you give thanks let your request be known unto god then it says the peace of god which surpasseth all understanding shall keep garrison your minds through christ jesus so when you pray having made supplications you know let me tell you something please look at me the, the principles of the kingdom sometimes we look so childish that in our matured world, our world of excessive adulthood and intelligence, we are unable to just submit ourselves to the childlike principles of the word of God. That's why Jesus said you have to become like one of these little ones. If you really want to inherit the kingdom if you want to walk in the experience of the kingdom, you must lay this excessive... Um, um, this sense of adulthood we are not children here the Bible gives a very simple formula that when you make your requests add it with thanksgiving hallelujah mm. the fifth reason why thanksgiving number five It is the secret to supernatural victories in the spirit. The secret to supernatural victories. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. I can tell you this from the authority of God's word. This ministry and in my own life. One of the cheapest ways to command victories over the powers and the forces of darkness is to properly and scripturally engage the mystery of thanksgiving very very powerful truth second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 second chronicles 2 22 to 24 and then we'll look at psalm 92 1 to 15 but we'll just look at 1 and 3 10 and 15 second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 sorry second chronicles 20 verse 22 to 24 media are you with us second chronicles 20 thank you 22 to 24 this was jehoshaphat listen the victory that was commanded listen and when they began to sing and to praise the lord said what ambushments against the children of ammon moab at mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitten look what happened 23 do you know while this was happening 
the children of Israel were not seeing it they were at the other side of the mountain giving thanks and saying you are good and your mercy endures forever and then at the other side God was commanding great victories for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir utterly to slay and destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir everyone helped destroy imagine with me how the last two died everyone helped destroy another as if it was a charm you just fight your, three of us plan to go and destroy pastor alpha we are tired of what god is doing in his life and we summon whatever arsenals we have and instead of him wasting his time on profitless things he engages thanksgiving and while he is doing that something is orchestrated makes me kill her and then i turn and we discuss who dies first she kills me and kills herself now i hope you know that these guys were warriors they were not children who were hungry they were trained soldiers you know how long it took for them to mobilize themselves and say let's come together as a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken and destroy judah the city of praise and while all of that were happening they listened to a prophet of god and he said look set the singers and the priest is that how you go to fight you put men of war and then women and then children that's how you fight war but he says this kind reminds me of psalm 149 it says let the high praise of god be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands right to bind their kings with the fetters of iron and to execute vengeance upon their nobles he said to to um, paraphrase it now to execute upon them the written judgment how the enemy will be defeated is none of your business your part is to engage obediently it says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete hallelujah this was perfectly adumbrated Ejimi, in the story of esther and a wicked man called mordecai are we together now yeah and uh, haman i'm sorry Haman was plotting to annihilate the Jews and he leveraged on his influence with the king and while all of that conspiracy were going on news got to to Esther and instead of her to go and murmur and say am I your wife or not say am I, you are my wife say will they kill my people just that's how many women will complain Vashti did it she was out it will happen to anybody because we are all women in the spirit Vashti did it. She was shown the way out. But look, look her. You know why she excelled? She listened to Mordecai. The same way the church prospers if we listen to the Holy Spirit. Mordecai was playing the position. He started advising her right from scratch. Referred her to Haggai. That's how she got to the palace. She listened to Mordecai. At a point in time, she even wanted to be rebellious. But she came back to her senses. And then she went and met him and said, Oh king, I want to flaunt your glory. I, I want to let the people see how excellent you are. King said, go ahead. And when she gathered all the people, the king looked at her paraphrase and said, keep doing this thing every time. Do it again. You see, kings were stupid twice in scripture. One, when they took wine. The other one, during their birthdays. There was a kind of dance that kings received that they did not seek advice kings were wise people they used divination to make judgments so when a king vetoes all the astrologers a lady danced her way to remove the head of a prophet a prophet but a dance removed his head they were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped someone here is giving god thanks and you will go back and see a rearrangement that's not how you left things 
that's not how you left things you left bills you left sickness you left all kinds of things but while you were engaging the mystery somebody is being forced to wake up from his sleep and saying how long will you keep disobeying me you must bless my daughter here's her account number see it in a dream zero zero two five seven one you are dancing here i know some of you don't believe these things happen you see there's a way you disobey god so much that you don't even know that certain possibilities exist when samuel prophesied to saul he said on your way going it will coincide with two men all of them holding loaves they will salute you and give you as if they don't know what to do with it that's what happens when the light of god shines upon you men will bless you for reasons they cannot explain that's how pharaoh blessed the nation of israel it was like a charm that's why when they left he said what did i do something was at work released through thanksgiving when they conquered the nation of israel and drowned them miriam raised up a song i will sing unto the lord she said for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider have been thrown into the sea and god said you are ready for the next level when they murmured they were in trouble are we together now very quickly let me give us three biblical ways to show gratitude three biblical ways to show gratitude number one we'll look at a few scriptures psalm 22 verse 22 the a part and then psalm 96 verse 3 the first way to show gratitude is through testimonies 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 are a way to demonstrate thanksgiving and gratitude read with me please the a part one to go i will declare thy name unto my brethren i will declare it i won't be silent god has been good to me i won't be silent and say let them not say i have a, I'm, I'm bragging too much it's not a lie he was good to me he is good to me and i still want him to continue to be so i engage thanksgiving you know sometimes we allow people's cynical attitude make us guilty to sincerely express the goodness of god how many people are afraid to say what god has done in their lives because there are all kinds of people with wicked hearts the moment you say i was sitting down someone just brought the car keys of a house so where is the house show us the picture the, the, all these liars who just come and speak you know people are the the system of babylon has trained people to hate the joy of others they may be sincere people you just watch someone buy a suit that he couldn't have afforded before and say be careful though it's only God that knows what everybody is. Why must you be cynical? Testimonies are powerful, provided they are communicated with a sincere heart. When your motive is to come and waste time and make noise, then that does not glorify God. But when God has done good things in your life, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, you perfect every happening and the dealing of God in your life through testimonies. psalm 96 verse 3 quickly please psalm 96 verse 3 it says declare his glory among the hidden his wonders among all people declare it declare it declare it when you stand to testify it's not pride you're not bragging provided you don't tell lies and you don't behave childish you come before the people of god look look what god has done for me I didn't expect that I would be eating right now. But look at what God has done. Look at the faithfulness of God. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Meaning it has capacity to impart faith and reproduce itself. So when someone is listening to you and seeing, let your light so shine before men that they may see. And then through it, give your father glory. The moment you hear the testimony of someone, cancer, 
HIV, whatever, and then healed supernaturally by the power of God. You now sit down and see how you have been insulting God simply because you have a breast lung. And he said, no, 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 but it, it, I mean, if someone was healed of A, B, C, D, all at once, my God is faithful and you lift up their spirit. Testimonies are powerful, brothers and sisters. There are many people who receive so much from God, but refuse when you were going through the challenges you told everybody, including those who could not help you now that god brought a miracle he said no I, um, my nature is not to say anything I'm, I'm a quiet person by nature god does not just want you to keep quiet over what he has done how will they attest to the fact that he is faithful are we together now number two the second way to show thanksgiving is to sing praises write it don't wish praises don't recite praises the bible tells us how to praise god he said sing praises turn your testimonies into songs turn your testimonies into melodies still psalm 22 verse 22 the b part and then we we'll look at Psalm 28 verse 7. Please quickly, Psalm 22 verse 22, the B part. It says, in the midst of the congregation, I will. It is I will praise you in my room alone. I will praise you. I will sing. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Psalm 28 verse 7. The Lord is my strength and shield. My heart trusted in him and i am helped he said therefore my heart greatly rejoiced and with what is the tool of praise with my not just the song of worship team there are times your gratitude will compose a song with my song will i praise you Psalm 105 verse 2. Let me give you a few scriptures to really help you there. Psalm 105 verse 2. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of his wondrous words. He says sing unto him. Bless his name. Sing unto him. Let him know you are so grateful you have converted your gratitude to a song. Two more scriptures. I found this and I think it was quite interesting. First Chronicles 16 verse 9. First Chronicles 16 verse 9. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Sing it one more time. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. It says, sing unto him. Sing psalms, talk of his wondrous works. Did I? We've read that already. Psalm 69. 69 verse 30. Psalm 69 verse 30. Psalm 69 verse 30. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. So you sing praises unto him. Number three. The third scriptural way you express thanks and gratitude is through your seed. Through your giving. Through your seed. Through your giving. Psalms 116 verse 17. Through your seed. Your giving. Sacrificial 
quality heartfelt giving not something you yourself cannot give yourself I will offer unto thee there is something called a sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon your name a sacrifice of thanksgiving Amos chapter 4 I found this scripture and it blessed me so much verse 5 Amos chapter 4 and verse 5 he says and offer what a sacrifice of thanksgiving with living and proclaim and publish the free offerings for this like at you O ye children of Israel it's not possible for us to get CEV I wish we could get any other version a particular version put it in an excellent way but it says offer this one you are not singing offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and then it says publish a free will it says I also oh, no 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 verse you're making a mistake verse 5 media well it's the same thing right? just just it's okay just just leave it that's all right offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving do you know let me tell you something according to scripture now even in the new testament men prayed and they sacrificed two things that went hand in hand prayer and giving remember cornelius acts chapter 10 god told two reasons why he attracted the presence of god number one your giving number two your prayers the, the the scripture we read before this says how that i will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving then i will call upon your name giving and prayer go hand in hand but simply because we have listened to people who have insulted every man of god written rubbish junk journalism publish every kind of nonsense to think that men of God are out to just manipulate people and here and there I know that you will find excesses here and there but it still does not negate the fact that it's a principle there is a dimension of your speaking that only your seed can speak that you celebrate God and you thank him for his faithfulness and bring out a seed if it's not sacrificial it's not a seed of thanksgiving the bible calls it a sacrifice of thanksgiving i want to challenge everyone here as god grants you grace before you finish this year if not today find a sacrifice of thanksgiving in fact frankly speaking that is the standard way it should be done you shouldn't just talk about it and say wow this is nice I love you too much to not tell you the truth do you know while i was studying this already i gave my own sacrifice before i came and the interesting thing about me and god is i don't choose what i like you may not have faith for that now but may god grant you grace to grow to a level where you allow god decide everything including your giving he decided your wife he decided your job why not your money <laughs> You see, the part you have not given God is where you will not get the best of Him. Hallelujah. Something dangerous happened to me this evening. Because while I was talking with the Lord and I said, Oh, I just felt it in my heart. I said, No, 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 no. The people of God, it's important to challenge them on that wise. And I just remembered, every true shepherd must lead the way. And I said, Okay, Lord, so what would you have me give? Very interesting, Jimmy. God did not tell me what to give. He told me what should be left in my account this is like this is like maybe 30 minutes before i came here and off it went oh no come on it all belongs to you oh, oh it all belongs to you it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. So 
I gave it with all joy. Thanksgiving. Two minutes accident will scatter your life. They will use that money to bury you and fight over the change. <laughs> Are we together? You leave it for a foolish person who has no discernment and wisdom. That was the frustration of Solomon. He said, I've worked so hard to build this. Now I would die and give it to an irresponsible son who didn't go through what I went through. He said, this is vanity. I'm cheated. I'm still rich, but I feel cheated because, I mean, how can I just give somebody who has no sense? Let me digress a bit and challenge you. Make him Lord of everything make him lord of everything it is foolish to surrender part and leave part god does not need your money he doesn't need your fame anything given to god is well taken care of god is a good manager our fears and insecurities which are a sign through faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice it takes faith to give that you trust god So through your seed let me give us one more the fourth way that we give thanks is by continually seeking him and promoting his interest first Chronicles 16 verse 11 by continually seeking him by seeking him is not like he's, he's missing seeking him is simply a, a figurative expression to communicate your desire for the depth of more of him i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more lord i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you Sixteen verse what did I give you 11 not 12 seek the Lord and his strength it says seek his face continually not when the money now comes you know it's amazing how people seek God when they are trusting him for certain things we've dealt with this it has become an anthem that when your pursuit for God is tied to certain results when you get the result I'm seeking God because I want to twist his hand and force him to give me this lady to marry the day you marry her you set a goal and you achieved it that goal has been achieved there is no impetus to seek God again I'm seeking God because I want to be a millionaire right the moment you have a million naira or a million dollars or whatever that's the end of it you shouldn't seek him again why seek God when you have all the cars and houses why seek God when you have eight, nine, ten zeros in your account? Foolish people seek God for things. Foolish people, not bad people, foolish people seek God for things. Never seek God just for things. Lord, I am seeking you because if you are God, you must give me this pure water. No, 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 no. Don't try to twist his hand. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. He says for the Gentiles run after these things. And your father knows that you have need of these things. But you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, if you seek the kingdom of God, the word righteousness there, yeah, it's not just talking about righteous standing. It means God, God's modus operandi, his principles. You seek his kingdom, his influence, and you also seek to understand his principle. In doing it, you will find the keys that will cause other things to be added. Hallelujah. Don't seek God for things. Seek him and seek to promote his interest. That's why we are called ambassadors. A true ambassador is committed to promoting the interest of the nation he represents an ambassador does not have an agenda of his own if at any point an ambassador is found having an agenda of his own he's a rebel he's a rebel 
the bible calls us ambassadors god has an intention there is something he's doing and we must plunge our entire lives to see his purposes fulfilled brothers and sisters listen to me it is not only important that we bless god and thank him it is important that we praise him with understanding it is important that we thank him with understanding when you thank god in ignorance the power is released through knowledge not the motions knowledge the revelation that backs what you are doing so you can be dancing around and not know why you are dancing and sweat by his mercies and out of his love he will bless you but in his system everything that is not done with understanding is the same as not doing it so if i give without understanding is the same as not giving if i sing without understanding is the same as not singing don't just do things have the understanding that makes them powerful just like many people say in the name of jesus rise up and walk it's not just speaking with understanding hallelujah god has been so faithful in my life in this ministry in our lives we will not only be disobedient we will be wicked if we are not lavish in expressing our gratitude to him not just by dancing but that you take your entire heart and put it on a tray and lift it up to him and say lord you deserve everything I was just thinking of the faithfulness and the mercies of God. We have traveled this year like none other. The deliverances of the Lord, you hear the testimony that the lady came to share, their truck. Do you know, do you know how easy it is to die when God is not protecting you? You can have a boil on your neck and die. Because the devil takes advantage of anything that gives him entrance people just had headache my head my head the wife goes to soak towel and comes out and meets a dead man thanksgiving we trivialize a lot of things people crying recession things are not going well there are people i think it was eddie one time we we're going to kaduna and he told me that um, some neighbors or so were begging for rice i'm not saying begging you for money they come with a cup and say give me two or three or four cups my wife and my children are about dying but then the mercies of god some of us quarter to it finishing something happens again that was not even tied to your tithing because some of us have not been faithful at all yet his mercies you know when you know the mercies of god you will really love him you will really really love him brothers and sisters in the next two or three minutes we are going to rise up and I want us to so lavishly worship him and thank him. Just two or three minutes. And then I'll just speak over our lives. If we miss out, I know you have danced, you have jumped around. But right now, I want you to just reflect in one minute on the faithfulness, the goodness, the kindness. It's grace, your grace. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Shabarato Kabariada. Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Sujana nena ke. Sujana, Sujana. Godia nena ke. Godia, Godia. Sujana nena ke. 
Kodia nena ki Kodia Kodia Suchada nena ki Kodia nena ki Kodia Kodia Suchada nena ki Suchada Suchada Kodia nena ki Kodia Kodia Suchada nena ki Godia nena ke Godia Godia Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Ya Yesu na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode Na gode
voice and begin to count your blessings. Lord, I was in front of that car. It would have killed me. I know it was not my faith, but your mercies. I watched you raise school fees for me in a way and manner. I saw that cause waved. Are you ready to worship him? Count your blessings, Koinonia, for the job you gave me. You changed my financial status this year. You opened my eyes and gave me understanding. I got born again this year. I got filled with the Holy Ghost this year. I understood the word of God this year. For multiplied grace. For uncommon influence. Tell him thank you. My father and my mother came back this year. They were at the verge of the force. But by your grace you stepped in. Worship him. Jesus I say thank you. I never had any plane crash. No car accident. You gave me a new house this year. You gave me accurate knowledge. Jesus, victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to Jesus. Over my life, I watched the power of witchcraft broken. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, worship him, Koinonia. Victory belongs to Jesus. Sing it from the depth of your heart. Hey, oh, 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 oh. hey. For the next two minutes we are going to thank God as a family we have seen the hand of God in mysterious ways this year miracles upon miracles change lives men and women here bodily entered into dimensions in the spirit lift your voice and thank God for koinonia for victory for victory for influence for grace ha. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Sing it from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, time will fail me 
to begin to tell you the things that God has done for us as a ministry influence favor access multiplication of grace when the media department were submitting a progress report preparing for the dinner one of the most touching testimonies is that as far as the moment any teaching is uploaded online an average of 1 million downloads within the first 24 hours no publicity no sir if I by the finger of God brothers and sisters we have seen answered prayers it was here you dropped the request yet the answer was waiting for you at home and you saw miracles people transformed by the hand of God I don't know about you but brothers and sisters help me thank this God in one minute and say Lord thank you epochal teachings that have come the mysteries of the kingdom building men and women some of you have seen your lives changed you've seen the anointing at work in your life mighty dimensions of grace thank you Jesus hallelujah one last prayer point I want you to thank God for your family I know some of them are not here on their behalf if you ever lie to me and say you did not see his hand this year you will not be fair you know what January was you know what December is right now lift your voice and say father thank you 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 mighty God mighty God thank you for our families many God born again this year many God filled with the Holy Spirit many found direction for their lives the words you Turns things around. Help me. Fans to thank him for the balance of the year into 2017 because you must get here don't ask don't ask lift your voice and say Lord I thank you your promises are yea and amen and I say thank you no devil will stop my eyes from seeing it I give you praise I give you praise I give you praise I give you praise in advance that sickness will not go with me to 2017 I give you praise are you giving him praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you have given God praise I want to release something upon your life that you will take back home for when you give him praise you provoke a dimension of his glory you provoke a dimension of his grace I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart you have given thanks it's time for you to carry the anointing and the grace that will help you finish so that you don't go home crying again you go as an ambassador listen listen on Tuesday I had a great time in the prayer department inside outside any of the overflows I want you to be very sensitive now I want to pray for you the prayer department I had a great time with them and one of the things I shared with them listen is that the level of grace and unction you carry defines your possibilities in this kingdom not just the name of Jesus listen please our possibilities are defined by the level and the kind of unction that is at work in our lives are we together now mm. hundred dollars and hundred naira are all the same denominations but not the same value are you getting what I'm saying now every challenge you face that is lower than the level of the grace and unction you carry will be solved but every challenge you face that is higher than the level of grace and unction you carry will not be solved scripturally you will see that it should be solved but the dynamics of bringing the result to your life is that you must upgrade through understanding and impartation to a level that will afford God to release the possibilities at the level that you desire are we together now our lives are limited by the level of grace and unction that we carry from January to December God has been faithful over our lives some of you now are going home there are all kinds of yokes of darkness waiting to mock God like they did last year but you are going back with an unction so that what could not happen last year I want you to believe what I'm telling you our possibilities there are some of you if you do not introduce the anointing you are about to receive in your family they will not celebrate Christmas well because there are orchestrations of hell but for your presence and so you appear there and introduce a mystery that disarms principalities and powers your understanding and the anointing are the keys you need to command victory your understanding and the anointing not just the anointing not just your understanding they work together like your left and right hand so an anointed life with a wrong paradigm will limit its operation a healthy paradigm with no anointing will stimulate the the expectation of possibilities that may never happen you need both a renewed mind which you have received all through this year Please, I'd like you to pray one minute with your heart open and say, Lord, I desire this grace. Let, let it come upon my life and make the difference. The difference. I have given you praise. Please pray. hallelujah hallelujah I will speak over everyone but let me just pray for the heads of department just the heads of departments and the maybe the ministers please quickly quickly just in one minute I feel like doing that for them and then I'll just pray for everybody at grace There is an unction from the Holy One. They have walked in measures of grace. Join them, Pastor Alpha. Femi, join them. Promise, join them. Father,
you have honored this house you have brought grace upon us lord i pray that the leaders will carry strange levels of grace please believe what is coming on you don't trivialize it i will pray for you strange grace grace strange grace from your spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ strange grace strange grace by the power of the Holy Ghost fire strange grace 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 for the next level in the name of Jesus Christ fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace for the next level lift your hands please everyone lift your hands in the name of Jesus the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing smoke and it's coming on people the Lord is sending this a prophetic grace Lord I release my hands right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now take it I place it upon your spirit Receive that grace, prophetic grace, privy to insights in the spirit, privy to insights in the spirit. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. I want to pray a prayer that everyone should release. There is a grace that releases the creative power of the word of God not the revelatory power revelation informs creation makes if I tell you God said this will happen listen I want you to believe me I'm about to release something on your life that when you speak there is a kind of unction that can leave your words and create realities not inform people it will happen I stand in the name of Jesus under this apostolic and prophetic anointing father inside and outside let men be baptized into this realm of reality receive that baptism right now creative dimensions creative dimensions inside outside receive it in the name of jesus 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 it's not just speaking there is a level of grace i want to pray for you god has shown me favor this year in my life in a way and a dimension that i can only give him glory father i pray that esther anointing that causes men to arise mysteriously in the name of Jesus take that anointing to your homes take it in your life Papa, take it, take it. you can't stand it it must come upon you it will land upon your spirit man that Esther anointing that Esther anointing help them please please help that lady somewhere in the name of Jesus Aaron that anointing is coming on your wife an angel of the Lord is pouring that oil upon your wife is a new season of favor a strange season of favor a strange season of favor a strange season of favor I hear my spirit restoration 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 the mantle is falling restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost restoration inside and outside I don't care what has left you help that mother please restoration of gifts restoration of dimensions restoration of levels in the spirit you once carried that have left you I release that grace on you right now strange restoration
a level of wisdom that you have never seen in your life illumination by the spirit to know what to do part time wisdom manifesting as divine direction ay, 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 ay. divine strategies receive it right now in the name of Jesus know what to do I command your spirit to know what to do by the illumination of the word of God I put the word of God upon your spirit and I command access to light access to illumination every prophetic word that came upon your life in January and is yet to find expression in the name of the Lord God of heavens between now and 31st December let there be a performance a strange performance a strange performance a strange performance I pray for you the mystery of exemption that when men say there is a casting down there is an anointing that can exempt men I decree and declare that as that unction comes upon you you are strangely and evidently exempted strangely and evidently exempted in the name of Jesus I'm praying anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death the spirit that snatches the lives of men 28 29th 30th when men die some even December 31st by 6 o'clock I command in the name of Jesus I forbid the earth from taking the body of anyone anyone marked for death here I extend your life by the word of the Lord I extend your life in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you listen some of us are going to the village now listen we are not in darkness as to the wickedness that is in villages the Spirit of God is doing something in this lady there is restoration that God is bringing there are people who are going to villages and there are wicked spirits enforced by the presence of men don't say it does not exist that snatches the way people go peacefully and return back divorced I pray for you Shatalakata. whoever plays with your life I stand upon this altar I command the earth to open up and swallow them I say it again any man that makes any enchantment any invocation over you or your loved ones the earth will open and swallow them I was talking with a lady today who are rounding up who shared something very touching with me where she comes from there are certain rules and regulations. There are some trees you don't touch. You touch those trees by mistake. You pay for it with barrenness or something mysterious. So if you mistakenly just see orange or guava and you decide to pluck it and eat it, that will be the end of it. She said the ground, the soil, where their compound is, their house, that you can stand there if anybody stands on it or something and makes invocation except somebody anointed intervenes it must happen and then some I think a relative to them now went and stood there and made a pronouncement over the family whether there was something about building house and he said whoever builds that house that as he's reaching sink level let the person die I said they should go to the village and tell that man that they met someone called Joshua Selman searched through witchcraft 
they call your name they die like chickens I tell you they call your name they die like chickens listen don't let men threaten you with nonsense value what you have a man born of a woman it exists and it will work until your light bails you out but let me tell you something I say it again I don't know who has said what Job said he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men I decree and declare and I reverse any pronouncement made over any family in the name of Jesus Christ <laughs> hallelujah a lady told me something the other day that there is I think a clan or a family where some people come from whether they are cursed or something they, they cannot marry they can't do I, I, I think she was telling me something like that for doing nothing once you are born into that family they say a curse is on you and truthfully speaking if someone marries you or whatever it is that's the end of it now what did you do wrong did you decide your bet somebody did something somewhere and now you are a victim of a stupid statement everybody shout no way shout it no way listen some of you have allowed that lie that's why you don't prosper hold on please let me just talk for one minute this thing is boiling my spirit there are people who will not break certain barriers because someone has indoctrinated you into believing that there is a covenant of poverty and truthfully the devil has leverage on your thinking and you are seeing it happen and it's true there are families like that you do everything it will not work but in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I prophesy over your life I don't care how long it has been break that barrier in the name of Jesus break that barrier in the name of Jesus listen don't think I'm just talking I understand witchcraft I've told you my grandmother was an idol worshiper she used to brew beer for masquerades so don't think that they gave birth to me inside plane I was just flying and enjoying myself I've told you how demons witches and wizards used to oppress me as a man of God preaching with anointing come on now whatever the devil has taken from you I don't care when in the name of Jesus the Bible says if you catch a thief he must return tenfold I command supernatural restoration now this year will not end till you are restored fully restored my status is changing it's no more decline I'm on my way to better days oh yes God is changing everyone's story status is changing there's no more decline I'm on my way to better days no matter where your family has been prophesy it status is changing there's no more decline I'm on my way to better days I'm on my way I'm on my way On my way The master key to attracting uncommon favor please make reference to my teaching activating seasons of greatness there I teach that the key to greatness in life is favor and I teach that there are two dimensions of favor there is favor with God and favor with men the Bible says and the boy Jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with God 
and men. I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men, there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it. I'm telling you, God has an agenda with us this year. Praise the Lord. God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people, but God wants to make people and families prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue in many families and I told you this is Bethel. Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We are going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system please pay attention is diligence and mastery hallelujah praise the lord by the grace of god one of the things that god has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works the components of the kingdom now we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God they say Jesus has died he's paid all the price he should come to me freely you will you will be broke and you will fail in life if that is the circumference of your belief about God on the other hand we have people who are just hustlers they want to make it by any means and they throw away the God factor both are wrong are you getting me diligence and mastery Two keys have been challenging us last um i think it was last week i did challenge us in this light again um what is mastery mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area comprehensive knowledge skill proficiency competence Genesis 41, please, quickly. Genesis 41, from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37. The Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you're there? One to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this in whom the spirit of God is? He said, can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. 
Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man? If you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person? Such a proficient person? And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was a he was a of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No, the Bible says the king testified, Pharaoh. He said, There is none, there is none who is as discreet and wise, and because of that. Verse 40, thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting, no discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. 44, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and he cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name, and he gave unto him his wife, Asenath, and the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt, the last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? It's not all up to God. And it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent. To gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ. They are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do. Different ministers of the gospel, they want crowd, they want grace, they want fame, they want popularity, but there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, don't worry, don't mind what I'm saying, just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prize, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exalt Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one act. According to their several ability he had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others you must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life especially in this season of God's glory hallelujah it's good to pray it's good to fast but you must be diligent you must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500,000. Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me, influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about life when you are a man of influence you sustain an ability that causes men to love your god to love your principles that's influence the kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts right and I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and say, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. 
uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you, what you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? They are comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy. Call to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk, they cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph, same story with Daniel. He ran through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty six to twenty eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight, I tell you. Verse 26, are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty men of David. 
one who fought single-handedly threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands the bible talked about david of the tribe of benjamin the bible tells us that the benjamites bible history tells us that the, the benjamites were so were so fine in in throwing slings they could diverge an arrow with a sling so it wasn't just that the anointing came upon david to kill goliath the anointing came upon something he had are you getting what i'm saying here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous. Made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jason. Seeing that he was industrious. He said no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, Every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God open doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you. Both in the church and in the secular environment. The minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth you come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down they say kai ken ah that song i say really you, you see how you are deceiving yourself we our standards are very small so we we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast because our standards are small you're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. 
Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah katayaba. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor. That dealeth with a slack hand. A lazy person. No inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. 
I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Twelve verse eleven. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. He said, "Not slothful." The word "slothful" there means laggy. You are not. You are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said, "Not slothful in business, diligent." fervent, zealous in spirit, serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord, you want to serve his body, you must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something, as you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether the right apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio bio what biotech that biotech place and when i went in i looked at his office and i looked at everything i said wow it's not about size it's about content are you getting what i'm saying it's about content at least i know that there is a project that they are on now projects of of hundreds of millions competence when you become competent let me tell you brothers and sisters all of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter Jeroboam the Bible says his mother was a widow meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much but competence please there are many of us here it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents they didn't go to school they done their best don't sit down in the average day and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. What he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches. And they will find him and not even ask, what is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, 
if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to, there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly as if it's your place, as if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by 7. You stroll around, you came late and say, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye great. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. 
Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity? God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities, when you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared. When you are ready. Then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated. And I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, 
but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20 downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I found my servant. And with my holy oil have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace. He will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable. Invincible. No matter what you say about that person. The world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your, to play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, ah is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. That something must be different about my life. 
Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you and they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar I've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happened to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says, For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials, sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist 
that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down waste your time make sure you cry unto god tell the lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain The floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain Open the floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it because it's a name that is above every other name hallelujah you're going to shout that name at the count of three as you shout that name there will be all kinds of deliverances many of you you are standing in not just for yourself but for your family members all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for in the name of Jesus I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil every covenant every spell at the count of three let the fire of God separate those people right now one two three those devils 
I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God, I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break chains. Break. Break. Chains break. Listen, some of you, this chains has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, may those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Chains. Break it, take 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 from every chain, I break free chains of sickness, chains of poverty, chains, chains of stagnation. I break the blood of Jesus. I break free by the blood of Jesus. I break listen, listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus. Now over families. Any family. Under the sound of my voice. You have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am. And I command. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Release the destinies of families 
Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1.18. It says, four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full, completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of jesus annihilates the legal hold you have i don't care what covenant you have in the name of jesus therefore i speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood i cost you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now i compel you by the blood of jesus that Lord opens the gates of captivity. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now you will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs yeah. hallelujah who is stephanie stephanie i hear a name stephanie you are wearing a like orange veil do we have somebody like that is it an orange veil or something stephanie yeah. bring that woman that lady or that woman whoever just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish fast. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know. If there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. 
Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I, didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen. My dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother. This year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This, this one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened she has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken. Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila katabarata. Jembra mato zatali kaparando skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of Jesus Christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the Lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the Lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ I break the embargo of darkness over the family come you are a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. 
light shines in the darkness you must release her let her go now I'm seeing an old woman's face but in the name of Jesus I declare you step into strange dimensions of grace I command deliverance to you right now in the name of Jesus God bless you it's all right I bless this family the Lord changes your story you will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus name Newi, I'm hearing a name of a place. There is, there's Newi. I know it's an Igbo place, right? There is, there is, a, there is somebody. I, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi, who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, Mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? This working, please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You I love God. Sleep. Yes. Very well. Very well. Yeah. Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God. Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you. Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's let's not. Where well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Left? Up to two years now. What, what is it? What happened? I feel a swoon in my waist. By my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't 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 cry. It's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give it praise the Lord. To break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? <laughs> they just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request, not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money, sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Eleven. Yes. And I have since graduate. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? 
Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I fell sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. He said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, sir. So they've left you to die. Yes, sir. Cut off of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs. Right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. It brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way, bringing breakthroughs to you, refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy. Look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made. Let me yours. Please bring out.
I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please, all those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jackson, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you, the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request. Ushers, let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side, please. Help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. 
Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Shaka prato soto bala la bala la bala 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 Hey Se mara na na mo suri ya na 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 ma se Shapra pakata bala la bala Rakata prato so pregeri bala la bala Father hear the prayers of your people In the name of the Lord Jesus let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh come. Lord, let things that look impossible by men. We pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hitherto, we ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord. The needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah Taya, he said is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level, by the weapon of the prophetic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Mam bro, do sekete balakata. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down. May they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down. May they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear. I cause fear. I cause fear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. 
mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called doll in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding 
that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor magaba dadala the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now i pray for all those who came here specifically trusting god for the fruit of the womb mazuka parata teleka in fact i pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore i command be fruitful in the name of jesus fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion in the name of jesus I command everything called dead in your life and your family i don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the lord jesus i command resurrection right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you there are people who desire god you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what i'm saying may the angel of the lord's presence visit you in the name of jesus christ i pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are you that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we're out of time we'll soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen i told you there'll be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what i'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help her please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen i want to pray as i stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but I'm going, it's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be 
from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer i want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatic alive lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like aaron like joshua lifted up the hands of his servant moses i command may those hands never go down may the lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and i pray for marriages supernaturally may god connect people supernaturally in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are I prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the Lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it Jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus 
inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on as they come god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old god bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to jesus hallelujah i salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem i want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me you rose again for me i surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever i denounce sin i denounce satan and i receive eternal life into my spirit keep your hands lifted father receive these ones change them transform their lives radically i cause the power of sin from your life and i release grace upon you to experience that which christ has done for you in the name of the lord jesus everything that keeps drawing you to sin i curse it right now in the name of jesus god bless you thank you for this great decision please follow the ushers the gentlemen with the jerseys they will have your details and you'll be back to your seat god bless you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.